Welcome to Tools, Tech, and Gear. I'm Seth. In this video, I have something new and exciting. I am building a video editing machine to replace the one that I've been using for the past nine years. It's starting to make some weird noises and I know that it's on its way out. So in this video, let's go ahead and open all the components that are gonna go in this new PC and then put it together. All right, where to begin? I think I'm gonna start with the biggest box and move down to the smallest box so we can go through everything that I have picked out here for this new machine. So the biggest box is going to be the tower. This is called the uh, Fentex Info Pro. I don't know anything about this tower. It just uh, was the style that I like and it looks like it's going to fit all the components just fine. All right, this is the coarse air water cooler. It's been a long time since I have built a PC. My previous machine, I will throw up the specs on the screen real quick so you can see what I have in there. It has done okay over the years, but definitely starting to get dated. This is the Course Air IQ H150i Elite Capilex Extreme Performance 360 millimeter RGB light, uh, liquid cool CPU cooler. <laughs> so I got the uh, an i9 processor and I wanted to make sure that it was going to be cool and not overheat. So that's why I went with the uh, coarse air liquid cooler. So it has three different fans included in this particular product. And then it has the actual little radiator here, which uh, way bigger than my previous computer had. And then down here is where it will attach to the top of the CPU to keep that cool. It's got a mount to hopefully attach that to the processor. Okay, a few of these things I'm not gonna open until it's time to install here in a few minutes, but we'll at least take a look at some of it. A uh, little hardware kit to mount that cooler on the processor. A quick look at the radiator, and I'm gonna leave the uh, paste alone here up under that uh, packaging. So, all right, there's that. And then if I open up one of these fans, that is quite a large fan to go on top of that radiator. All right, we'll get to all of these here in a moment. The next component here is the graphics card. I went with the GeForce RTX 3080. This thing has uh, 12 gigs of RAM and uh, it's gonna be a big improvement over the eight that I had before on my uh, uh, 1070. All right, definitely has some nice packaging in here. Let's see what's inside of this envelope. <laughs> An interesting thing, how to upgrade your PC with a new graphics card. Let's see what this looks like here. All right, there's a bracket. And then over here is the actual graphics card. Impressive. All right, well, I'm gonna keep this in the bag over here until we get ready to do the install. Next, I went with the Corsair RM1000X power supply. This can do a thousand watts. Whenever I built the PC, it seemed like uh, the maximum wattage that it would need was about 675. And so I figured a thousand watts ought to do it. So hopefully that is all we're gonna need here. All right, let's open up this package and see what this power supply looks like. So here is a nice thick power cord. Got a nice big bundle of all the different uh, cables needed to go to different components. Let's pop those open real quick. All right, yeah, so just a whole bunch of different cables as you would expect here in a power supply. There we go, RM1000X is what this one is called. Next up, we have the motherboard. This is the ASUS Prime Z790P with Wi-Fi. Let's open this up. All right, there is the Wi-Fi antenna on that side. And we'll look at this a little closer here in just a moment, whenever it's time to get it installed. Got a nice big user manual. It's got a couple of uh, data cables and then a plate to cover everything on the back. Up next, we have the processor. This is the 13th gen Intel i9 the 13900KF. So let's go ahead and open up this and see what it looks like.
As far as RAM goes, I got the Corsair DDR5 64 gigabytes, 5200 megahertz. This motherboard allows me to use the new DDR5 and figure that I would uh, go ahead and give it a try. Instead of uh, using the old DDR4, I decided to uh, use what I had available to me and uh, upgraded to DDR5 5200. Now for the drive, I got the Samsung 8700 Evo. This is a SATA 2.5 and uh, one terabyte. I know it's not a lot of storage. In my previous system, I only had a uh, 256 gigabyte uh, SSD and uh, I did fill it up after a while, but the majority of the work that I do is actually on uh, external drives for video editing. Um, but this right here should do quite well for uh, storing all of my things here. Last of the small boxes, I just got a copy of Windows 11 Home as my operating system. I just realized I said I was gonna start with the biggest box first and didn't open the tower. But anyway, let's go ahead and do that now. Uh, this thing does come with handles on the side. I may actually drop this down here into the chair and uh, pick it up onto my table. <laughs> the handles are actually what were stopping this from coming out of the box here. Does have tempered glass on this side. Asks that you uh, handle with care. Go ahead and pull that off. It looks like to open this up, you need to uh, remove these screws over here, and this will open up like a little cabinet. It's got some twisty ties around the box of goodies. Taking a quick look around, this little door opens up to the side, it does have some hinges on it. And as you can see down here, it's got a compartment to keep the power supply uh, up under here. It has the cables back here for fans, it does have a chassis fan there, and also there's one up in here. It's a bit hard to see. It's right here, even though it may be a little hard for you to see. Um, it does have bays for your hard drives. It's got a uh, USB uh, 3 up here with a USB-C and then some audio. And then I'm not sure what these buttons do yet, but I'm sure we'll figure it out. There's a power button up top. It has a magnetic um, filter screen up there. So slides around a little bit, but you can pull that off, dust it off if you need to. All right, plenty of extra bays up here to access things. I'm actually gonna put an SD card reader in this one. It's got uh, a fan up under here for some ventilation. Moving over here, it's just blank on this side. And if we move to the back, you can see that fan there. And there's where we can um, pull these out to add components. And now that we've taken a look at all of the individual components going into this new PC, let's begin the build. The first thing I wanna do is get the power supply installed because uh, this is kind of hard to get to. And so anything else we do would kind of make it even more difficult. So anyway, let's begin with the power supply. I need to remove the back side panel. I'm just going to unscrew from the back here. Removing the back cover real quick. In order to remove the cover over the power supply, I have to take out these two screws right here, one there and one there, and that will remove this metal plate down in here that is gonna cover up the power supply. That should allow us to remove that cover over the power supply. Took a bit of coaxing, but I got that thing to pop loose. Just had a couple little rubber stoppers that fit in these grooves. All right, so let's go ahead and get the power supply set down in here. I'm gonna mount the power supply with the fan facing down. And the reason for that is because the metal plate that we just removed would be way too close to this unit if uh, it was mounted with the fan up. So I'm gonna do that. And then the case also came with a little bit of hardware 
that I can attach this uh, to. So let me go back around here and do that. I've laid the case down so it will be easier to get to some of these components. I'm going to go ahead and put the ASUS back plate on here real quick. Hopefully it will just fit right into place. This motherboard has six screws total to hold it down to the uh, case. So just about to get all of those done here. Now it's time to get this processor installed. It's gonna go right here. Push this little lever down and out of the way. And that loosens up this flap. So now I can press this out from the back side here. There we go. Now on the processor, there is a little uh, triangle that needs to match up with the other end. Here we go. Now I can just place this back and then place the lid back into position and then get this little lever to snap back in. And that's as simple as it is right there. Once again, I'm gonna pull the back panel off of this case. And I have also freed up the top right here so that I can access the uh, cooling uh, mount up here for the, uh, the water cooler. Now, because I have the Intel processor, I'm gonna use the bracket for the Intel here. And that's just simply going to be put onto the back. So I'm gonna remove the a 3M sticky tape that's on here. And then this is just a standoff with little rubber bits on it that's going to go right in here. Now this cooler can fit several different installs, but uh, for me, I've got the Intel 1700. It's written on the bag. So I'm gonna take these standoffs and I'm going to use those to get the uh, bracket on the back lock down to the motherboard. Before I attach the pump head, I wanna get these fans installed. Now, if you look closely on these, there is a little directional arrow. You won't be able to see it here, but basically it says uh, the wind is gonna go down and the fan is gonna turn this way. So basically I want to have the, uh, the wind pulling through here from the outside. So it's gonna bring the air in here as a cooling device. I've got all three fans lined up to match the holes underneath so that I can use the included hardware to get these installed. So basically what's gonna happen is when these fans turn on, it's going to pull air from the outside over those coils and cool things off. So go ahead and get these installed here. Now I'm going to simply place this cooler up in here and hopefully manage to get everything locked down nice and tight here. Now it's time to remove this plastic from the paste back here and I can just turn this into position. Something like this right here. Line up my standoffs and press this into position. This unit comes with these little thumb screws. So I can tighten these down. I stuffed all the fan cables to the back of the case. And now I'm gonna take this little tiny wire right here and just connect it to the uh, CPU fan up here. This should only go in one direction. I just spun the tower around again and uh, I'm gonna be connecting all of these wires from the fans and the cooler back here. So it's kind of a tangled mess, but it's pretty easy to uh, get the ones to the uh, RGB and fan on the hub. So there's a yellow sticker, the ones that say to RGB hub. And uh, on the hub itself, it says RGB hub down here. So basically just want to plug those up. One, two, and three. And on the other side is where I'm going to plug up the Fans. Now this hub can accept up to six fans and my case here has five. So I'm just gonna plug them all in here. Here we go. And now the cables that are on this little hub 
One of them is for power, which is this one right here. And then the other one goes to the um, RGB port here on the motherboard. So I'm just gonna find an available spot and poke that one through to meet up in there. And then I need to find a place to mount this. It does come with that 3M tape. Uh, but also before I do that, I need to plug up the uh, other cable that came with this. Uh, there it is. So this one has been poked through from the other side and I'm just going to connect this very carefully, matching up the white square to the white square. Now it's RAM installing time. So I'm gonna use the uh, two gray ones here. This is A2 and B2. The uh, motherboard instruction says that that is the order that it wants this to be in. So that's what we're going to do. Made a good solid click in there. That's a good thing. Now it's time to install the solid state drive. This case has a little option here that is pretty cool. You can slide out these little uh, plates here and then simply install the SSD into them like that. Just using some of these tiny screws. Tell you what, things have changed a lot in the nine years that I've not built a new PC. And now it's graphics card time. So up here I've got the uh, PCIe 16. I'm going to remove the two uh, back vents that are available here. And now I can pull the graphics card out of the bag here very carefully. Now there's a protective rubber piece here on the graphics card. Pull that off, make sure the little tab is off of the slot down here. And I'm gonna very carefully get this pressed down into position here. Two weeks have now passed since I started building this PC, and that's because I was waiting for my SD card reader to arrive. And during that time, I also ordered this uh, Samsung 980 Pro PCIe 4.0 NVMe M.2 SSD. <laughs> it's a one terabyte. So this right here will uh, be a hard drive that mounts directly onto the motherboard next to the CPU and hopefully give me super fast speed. So let's go ahead and also install both of these before we get to hooking up power to finish out this system. I went with this Grogger multi front panel because it had a nice fast SD card reader. And uh, being a YouTuber, I go through uh, a lot of SD cards. So anyway, we're just going to install this onto the front panel. It's got, uh, let's see here, just a couple of um, USB type C's, USB type A, uh, three, and then it's got a micro SD and a regular SD. So all of those I use on a regular basis. All right, set that aside for a moment. And then also let's take a look at the 980 Pro one terabyte M.2 drive here. There we go. Whenever I built my PC that I've been using for the past nine years, the uh, M.2 drive was not a thing. SSDs had just come out and I think I paid $500 for a 250 gigabyte. So uh, this right here was I think 100 bucks for one terabyte. So anyway, they've come a long ways. We'll get this thing installed as well. I've already moved the M.2 heat sink from the location right down here. Now, like a lot of this stuff, it may be a little bit difficult for you to see, but I'm gonna move the uh, cooler lines out of the way and then reach down here and put the M.2 into position. Definitely would have been worth doing this before installing that very large graphics card. Okay, I've got that at an angle down there and now I have to find one of those tiny little screws to go in there. There's a very good chance I'm gonna drop this screw down in here All right, it took a bit, but I got that screw in there. There is a standoff to keep this 
from uh, being flexed. So there is a heat sink tape that I'm gonna be pulling off of the back of this uh, little heat sink bar here. Hmm, well that's not gonna fit. I had to wait several weeks for this plate to come in so that my SD card reader would fit inside of this bigger housing. But uh, anyway, so I kind of stopped filming at that point. But let me just show you here. The uh, graphics card needed three PCIe power slots. And then I had to uh, power up the motherboard, of course. And uh, I had never used one of these cases where all of the power cords were tucked up under this metal plate. I like it. It definitely makes things look a lot smoother in here. I was able to pull cables from the back to uh, hook up to the motherboard and that all turned out very nice as well. Uh, I just got this drive hooked up, had to go into the settings and uh, um, go ahead and put a drive letter to that. Um, but anyway, uh, things are looking very nice and I am very pleased with the results here. The uh, water cooler is working well. Graphics card, I've just done basic install stuff, but haven't really used it for any editing yet. Um, but I like this PC a lot. Now on the back over here, I was able to get my uh, Wi-Fi connected to the motherboard. I need to hook up some audio up here. Now I'm used to using a 5.1 audio, so I may be adding a card later to access that. But you can see down here, the graphics card has different ports that I can use for multiple monitors. Plenty of uh, USB back here. Connecting all the power to this unit was tedious and took a while since it's been several years since I've had to do that. Um, but basically just make sure that every component has power to it and you should be good to go. That uh, Corsair power supply had all the cables I needed, although it came close because I used up every single one of those PCIe's here uh, on this build. One thing that I didn't show is the bracket for the graphics card. It takes up another slot down here and it just gives support so that the graphics card isn't uh, flopping around down here. So just keep that in mind that that graphics card is gonna take up a significant amount of real estate here in your uh, PC build. I do have just enough space down there for that audio card to go into. So it should be good. All right, I just wanna give you a little update on how this is doing. So far, it's performing flawlessly. So I only have this little external monitor here to work with, and this old keyboard from Dell, and the old mouse as well. But let's go ahead and turn things on so you can see how it starts up. Water cooler lights are going down there. You can see the uh, G-Force also has that same kind of rainbow colored pattern. Asus motherboards kicking on here. I did install the uh, card reader here. I only had one port for the uh, USB type C and so this one up here uh, is not going to work. Those will work and all the uh, audio. Um, these will work but not the ones up here in the top. Now this is Windows 11 but I added classic shell so that uh, I still have a start button over here because I like the old school look of computers like Windows 7. So anyway, there you go, that's working. My main editing PC is now over nine years old and it was starting to make some odd noises so I knew it was time to upgrade. So that's the main reason that I am showing you this video here so you can see what I'm gonna be working with here in the future. So I will be using my 32 inch curved monitor with my additional uh, 27 inch monitor on the side. I'm just using this one right here just to install the software. If you've ever built a PC, you know that reinstalling all of your favorite programs takes forever. So that's the stage I'm in right now. But anyway, that's all I have for you in this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. I will try to link all the components down below. Now I did buy these off of Newegg's website. If you've never used Newegg, it is pretty fantastic. You uh, bring up the website and it will show you the components that you have 
in your system so far and if they're compatible with other components. So for instance, it'll show you a watts value of your total components. And so you'll know whether or not the power supply you have selected will even power the components you're putting in your PC. You can also work with uh, different towers and different graphics cards and it will tell you whether or not, like for instance, this big graphics card here has to have a full size tower or else it's not going to fit. So anyway, um, I will have a link to the Newegg website. I highly recommend you use them for building your next PC. I'm Seth with Tools Second Gear and I will see you in the next video.